something I often tell people, um, and I'm going to demonstrate this today, is that in spite of my YouTube persona, which is, you know, I guess a little bit of a low-key kind of guy talking nicely to people about things that cross his mind without any real value placing placed on any of it, in spite of that persona that I've created for YouTube, I'm actually a bit of a jerk in real life. I have a fast temper. Um, there's a definite streak of sadism in my character that I won't deny. I'm not proud of it, but I'm not ashamed of it. It seems to come with being a human being, is to have aspects of your character that you wish weren't there. Oh well, we are what we are, right? So long as I'm aware of the fact that uh, as a member of society, I have obligations towards other people, uh, not to be too much of a jerk. Um, you know, I don't think that society has any claim on me to be anything other than what I actually am. So, I'm coming clean, you know, and I often say this, that in spite of what you see on my YouTube screen, these videos, I'm actually something else. That this is just a persona that I'm projecting onto the screen. Now, that that is the exact issue that I'd want, that I'd like to, um, I'd like to deal with here. I just went through a bit of a savaging of Etienne Emile Anticatastasis. Anticatastasis. I don't know. I, I can't pronounce that, and I often can actually pronounce ancient Greek properly, but I can't pronounce this. Anyway, a young woman antinatalist um, may have come across her. Um, I just made a video. In the very beginning, you see sort of um, something that brings to mind an image of the Virgin Mary. You see an attractive young woman wearing a nice dress with spaghetti straps on it, very pure in a, in a particularly Caucasian sort of way with her fair skin and her reddish hair, um, sitting on a nice, very feminine bed uh, in a very clean environment, a very girly, very sweet, very nice sort of virginal um, milieu. And she's talking about antinatalism, which is not necessarily a misanthropic point of view, I, and I've said so all along. But um, if you read if you read between the lines of what she's saying, you're getting, or at least I get, and I may be misreading her here. I get the distinct impression that she wants to denounce people. I do that she wants to live in a pure, wonderful world where there's no flatulence, there's no cancer, there's no wars, there's no child abuse, there's no rape. Um, she wants that world very badly. She runs up against reality, the reality that humans are what they are. And she's revolted by it. The fact that after, what, 4,000, 10,000 years of recorded history or whatever, we still haven't learned not to blow each other up, not to terrify each other, not to be cruel, not to be vicious. We still haven't learned any of that. Hmm. That can frustrate an awful lot of people who go for high ideals. It's the kind of thinking that underpins things like les tricoteuses, the women that were supposed to sit around the guillotine during the French Revolution, toothless old hags. And I'm not impugning uh, Etienne Emile's uh, looks at all. In fact, she is extremely attractive. But the tricoteuses were not. They were toothless old hags who would knit um, the... Um, revolutionary cockade for everybody, the French uh, red, white, and blue cockade, which the people would wear on their hats uh, to loudly proclaim their allegiance to the revolution. And they would sit around the guillotine watching and cheering and 
one would assume, slavering if they had any fangs, which they didn't. Um, every time some counter-revolutionary got his head lopped off, he got exactly what he deserved. Now, this is, in many ways, one of the main themes of the French Revolution, which is, or at least the English-speaking world, they say, okay, look, these revolutionaries talk to high talk, and they pointed at aux armes, les citoyens, formez vos bataillons, and this, you know, the French national anthem is probably the most resounding, uplifting song ever written. But look what, how some people interpreted it. Things are not always what they seem, and you have to look behind appearances. I believe that Etienne Emile is denouncing people savagely. Again, I apologize if I am misreading um, Ms. Anticatastasis. Sorry. If I'm misreading her, maybe she is what she presents herself as. Maybe she is a pleasant young woman sitting on her bed in her bedroom making videos um, out of empathy for the entire human race. Maybe she is. I've only got my own beliefs to go on. I think at least part of her hates the human race, hates it for being what it is and ruining her nice little world, as shown by her view of her bedroom. I said at the beginning that I was going to be nasty in this video, and I am being nasty. And I apologize if I'm misrepresenting somebody, but I'm saying what I actually believe to be the case. <clears throat> Nietzsche said Christianity was nothing more than hatred tarted up or tricked out in the clothes of love. I'm not sure that I agree with him 100% on that, but I can see exactly what he meant. You and I may have met Christians who, are, who really fit that mold, right? You can never really see, you can never really judge a book by its cover. Um, and situations like this and like the French Revolution and any other situation in which high ideals are compared to human reality. Um, when she makes her video, Etienne Emile, when she makes her video, she's very careful to present herself in a certain light. Very careful. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, if you ask me, that is simply a... Um, a function of her gender. That's what women do. I, I have nothing against that. I have nothing against women who who use the way they look to present their message. It's part of metacommunication, right? We communicate on many different levels. Um, the level that I'm communicating on is vastly different from when I get into a shouting match with somebody at work um, over a union issue or something like that. And I've gotten into tons of them, and I'm not interested. Who hates my ever-loving guts? Um, so I'm not saying I'm any different. I'm not denouncing anybody here in the same way, <laughs> although people are going to say I am. That's uh, nothing I can do about that. Um, I uh, told somebody else in the comments section of that video, the um, architect, that... Um, that uh, I don't really think that a certain type of antinatalist is motivated by empathy at all. They're motivated by hate. They're motivated by myth misanthropy. They'll say that they're motivated by love and empathy. But I don't believe them when they say that. And again, when you look at the metacommunication taking place, when you look at the body language, we all know how in Mendham presents himself. Well, let's see how uh, Ms. Etienne Emil presents herself. Almost the opposite kind of presentation, but the message is the same. Uh, the message is denounce, denounce. And um, bear with me here. Sorry, that was that horrible child that I was horrible enough to bring into this horrible world. I had to keep him out while I'm making a video. 
Um, or that wonderful child that I had the horrible misanthropy to wrench into this world unwillingly. Um, now, this brings me to a certain view of the female, which I find rampant here on YouTube. As everyone knows, or anyone who actually follows my videos here, I, um, I follow a type of Eastern practice called Tantra, which essentially places the female front and center of absolutely everything. That the universe is essentially, and I take this in just a strictly poetic um, sense, in a strictly artistic sense, because I don't believe in gods or anything like this. Um, I uh, I think that um, that that's an apt metaphor to describe reality. The female is, or at least the female principle, which is known as Shakti, underpins everything. Shakti is a certain force that is essentially feminine in nature uh, that women possess and it comes out in ways that men really don't understand. Things like placing your makeup a certain way, a certain type of body language, a certain type of um, metacommunication, a certain type of psychological interaction with, with women, uh, especially when they interact with men. Um, all this stuff that a lot of guys like MGTOWs or whoever, um, or um, MRAs or whatever, even take it to an, uh, the nth degree, true force loneliness, TFL type guys who essentially think that uh, feminism or whatever is this massive conspiracy. I think these people are fools, to be perfectly honest. I don't think that they really see women for what they really are, or perhaps they did see women for what they really are, and were shocked by it into thinking that women are somehow evil. It's in Emil's video, kind of adds credence to this idea that um, that women are inherently sneaky, inherently manipulative, inherently duplicitous and double-dealing. Because as I say, what I see, and, in, and again, I, this could be simple projection, I fully admit this, I see a young woman who is using her looks and her appearance and her demure manner and her body language to denounce the entire human race for being exactly what it is. She is not what she presents herself as, at least not on a certain level. On a certain level, I believe she's motivated by hate and the desire to denounce. But what she actually presents herself as is something completely different. A lot of women do this. Men are tricky and deceitful in some, in certain ways women are tricky and deceitful in others. What Etienne has done is she has used her Shakti power, which is a really off-putting term for a lot of people. But all it means is she's used the tools at her disposal as a woman to add oomph to her message, to add oomph to whatever she does. Um, a lot of men or woman hating MGTOW type guys whom who will always say of course that they don't hate women um, strike me as the same sort of thing or they strike me as doing the same thing for almost the same reasons as this young woman does they look at this they look at a woman just being a woman and putting force behind her message with the tools at her disposal i.e. her looks and her charisma and her body language as evidence that women are bad. I don't see it as that at all. I see it as evidence of the power of females and what this is something that impresses me about women. Um, I'm being harsh and cruel here, I understand that, but you, you do see the um, you do see the hidden compliment in what I'm saying about, uh, about this video by uh, Etienne Emile. Good for you. You're using your uh, your Shakti, your female charisma, which is all it is. There's no actual magic to it. 
She's just using the desires in males' minds and in women's minds as well. Men desire her for one reason. Women desire what she is for another. Women go, I want to be her. Men might, in their reptilian um, way, feel other things about what they want from her. Very harsh, I understand this. Please forgive me if I'm misreading here. But I'm just saying, if you want to see this sort of thing for what it really is and not to let lead it not for it to lead to you hating women the way a lot of men do you've got to look at it for what it really is i know a german guy that went to live in japan for a year and he was essentially destroyed for several years by completely mixed signals from japanese women um I left a link uh, below to this image of this sweet, cute, in impossibly um, girly little Japanese teenager. I've raised this issue before, but I think it bears re-raising. Um, and the German fellow um, that I know kind of fell for the charisma of that kind of that kind of presentation, that kind of female, um, deliberate female show that is being put on for him. He fell for it. You look at that little teenage girl that I have in my, in the links bar below, and what does she look like to you as a male? That's not what she is. <laughs> She's a human being, every bit as flawed as every other human being. That image that she has taken and placed on the net here, and I guess it's a selfie, You've, we've all seen women very carefully putting together their selfies, is very, very carefully put together. That's not what you get when you date a Japanese woman. You get somebody just as complex, just as phony, just as manipulative, um, just as cruel as any other human being. But the Shakti power that women have, which is again nothing more than a play on our own desires, it's, there's no magic to it, makes you think maybe she is what she looks like. Maybe she is that. Maybe, maybe the appearance tells the truth. This, if you ask me, is at bottom what a lot of MGTOW and a lot of TFL really is. It's when women use their charisma in this way to actually get something that men think is nefarious or just to sort of get the thrill of proving yet again that they can make any man they want fall in love with them. Um, this leads to misogyny. I fundamentally disagree. It should not lead to misogyny. It should lead to a more realistic assessment of what women are. You should actually be impressed by this sorcery they've got about them, not have it lead you to hate them. They're not as weak as they let on, but just the fact that they're letting on that they are something that they are not doesn't make them evil. Human existence is in many ways a struggle and a competition, and people often have to use whatever tools that are given to them by the accident of their birth to excel in life. And if the cute little Japanese emo teen does this, well, she's only doing what we all do, isn't she? There's my son pounding on the door. He won't let me uh, finish this, so I apologize. But I really enjoy making this video. Um, it's a subject that's very dear to my heart. Uh, because again, I, I like women. I truly do. No, Quinn! Sorry. Um, I really like this subject and I really like how female charisma can put people off, especially males, but sometimes females get put off by it. Um, there's a double game being played, passive aggressive, uh, bait and switch, all of that, yes. Does this make women evil? No, it makes them human. I'm just as phony as, as Emilia Tien is. I just said that at the beginning of my video. Make no mistake. 
We all do this. Now, normally it's harmless enough. If a woman sort of shakes her hip a bit, her hips a bit in a bar and gets a guy, some sucker, to buy her a drink when she doesn't have any money, I tend to see that as pretty darned harmless because any guy that's walked into a into a singles bar it has set himself up for this. He wants something out of the women there. Okay, they want something out of him. <laughs> There's nothing evil about a woman using the tools at her disposal to get what she wants any more than a guy will buy drinks for her to try and get something that he wants. This does not make women evil. It just makes them humans. So, beware of appearances. Beware of the cover of that book. There are many different ways to view just about anything. And I'm as human as the next guy. I seriously um, hesitated to make this video. And I feel an uncharacteristic, uh, uncharacteristic, uh, uncharacteristic twinge of guilt when making this. Because I look at the young woman. I've got the image right here on my screen. And I'm a guy. I look at her and I want to protect her from nastiness. Because, I don't know, that's what guys are like. I want to sort of say, nobody should be mean to Etienne Emile. Nobody should be... Um, people should be nice to people like that. People should listen to what they say. People should protect them. They're treasures. Ideal humans that should be admired. Um, this sort of thing. Like, isn't she exactly what an ideal human would look like? Um, very beautiful, very attractive, very soft-spoken, very nice and demure in her movements and everything. She's also a human being. Don't let the cover of that book beguile you, but don't let yourself get ugly when you open that book and see what's really inside. Um, people are befuddled by female charisma. People are befuddled by a superbly nurturing mother, especially men. Men are befuddled by feminine beauty. They are befuddled in many ways by little old ladies that require their assistance. Um, they're befuddled by very cute little girls. Um, they're befuddled by all this sorts of thing. And, and what you get, and, and, and sorry, what is going on here is nothing more than your own desires taking hold of you and projecting it onto some, some other human that really isn't worthy of how you see them little old lady that you proudly help across the street, and I do this myself, may not be quite as helpless as she lets on, or maybe she is, but maybe she's putting on this act of extreme helplessness to elicit something in a male who will then walk her across the street. She gets what she wants. She wants protection. She wants some sort of... Um, she wants society or people walking down the street to view her in a certain way as a frail little old lady who... Um, is in need of help, and most males instinctively respond to that. Even if she is manipulating us in that way, using her her feminine wiles, her shakti power, to manipulate males into giving her what she needs, i.e. she requires someone to help her across the street, and she's going to look all helpless and, and, and lost and sad and everything in order to get men to do this. There's nothing wrong with somebody doing that. It doesn't make her a manipulative old hag. It simply means this is what she has to do to get around downtown when she's walking by herself. She often needs assistance to get across the street because it's bloody dangerous for her to do it. And the best way to do it is to get people to want to help her cross the street. And what, way to, what better way to do it than to appeal to other people's better natures, to act a little bit more helpless and frightened than she actually is, to ostentatiously express her emotions. This is what I call Shakti power, the female ability to cast a charismatic spell around themselves to alter the behavior of others. 
it doesn't make women evil. But you've got to be able to look past it. You've got to be able to see behind it. Just because a man is loud, bombastic, strong, and pushy, it doesn't make him an evil, ugly, uh, spirited person. Because that's what I am in real life. I'm loud, bombastic, pushy, foul-mouthed a lot of the time, and obnoxious. This has come in handy in, in the long shouting match that is union politics. This ability. Okay. It's in Emil, isn't who she says she is. She presents herself as a pixie-like young virgin sitting on her bed. But she's a human being like anyone else. And that comes out when you read between the lines of her message. I don't think she's nearly as altruistic as she presents herself to be. She may be, however. I'm just saying I don't necessarily think that that is the case. If I've been cruel to her, if I've been harsh in the way that I've dealt with her, I apologize. I'm as susceptible to female charisma as anyone else is, but I like to tell myself I at least recognize it for what it is. And again, just because I recognize female charisma doesn't mean that I'm led to hate it or be frightened by it. I just want to see it for what it is, because I do not want to become jaded, cynical, um, and uh, bitter about the human race in general. Ms. Etienne Emile um, said about me, he's old, the damage has been done. I do not hold that statement against her. I truly do not. Because I riposted with, I believe, my dear, that I'm younger than you are. Do you understand why I would say that? What does it mean, really, to be old? We're all old. We're all at death's door. We're all really old, as a matter of fact, if you ask me. In a hundred years, we will all be dust. What is youth really? What is youth really? Youth is continual, in continued rather, engagement with the process of life. And as you see from that irritating but irritating little phenomenon, but a phenomenon I wouldn't give up for the world, life at the door, I ain't cynical and bitter about life. Um, I certainly don't want others to be that way. But life can turn against itself. And when it starts doing things like that, you start getting ideas of mere survival being an end in itself, or the struggle is an end in itself, and the competition is an end in itself. No. Just riding the tiger, if you ask me, is an end in itself. Living your life, don't letting it live you. And that's one of the things that I find that a lot of people who hate life seem to be succumbing to. Succumbing to this idea that we're nothing more than puppets on a string. That our lives do live us, and we have no way of living our lives. Don't agree with that either. And... As for the misogynistic way of um, reading this video, assuming anyone has made it this far, reading what I'm saying in this video, um, okay, I've said that I'm not a misogynist, but I've also said that I don't believe what other people's self-descriptions are. So if people want to call me a misogynist, that's fine. I'm um, off to yoga lessons today to, to do yoga with uh, a bunch of new-agey young women and I'm a 52-year-old guy, imagine the ability that you have to um, parody me in that way. Uh, my wife is also radically younger than me. So again, you can, <laughs> you can have all kinds of fun with stereotyping me in that way. 
So if I'm stereotyping uh, its enemy or women in general or Japanese women, okay, I feel free to stereotype me. I have it coming. I'm not what I seem either. Um, but again, I don't think that that makes women bad for being like this. I honestly don't think it makes me bad for seeing them like this. I certainly don't wish anybody any ill for being exactly what they are. And if uh, the young antinatalist I refer to here is simply being exactly what she is, power to her. Why shouldn't she? But there's no sense in believing that she's something that she's not. Be careful of ideals. And be careful especially of that thing called Shakti power. Or another interesting concept in Eastern philosophy is Maya, which is the big illusion cast by everything. And it's generally considered female as well. Um, having said that, um, just because it's an illusion, and just because it isn't what it seems, and just because the ideal never meets the real, um, that's no reason to go full-on anti-female. If you ask me, it's the challenges in life that make life worth it. And a male coming to, coming to terms with female charisma and the fact that women are not what they seem, or people in general are not what they seem, is part of the ride. Again, I've apologized a million times in this video, but if I have been harsh, I apologize again.